Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever the time may be. Welcome back to the channel, or welcome for the first time if you're new around here. My name is James, aka Widowed, and today is a little bit something different. Rather than specifically going over things that exist in the league, and talking about new releases and stuff, with a day of calm before the storm today, as there are no reveals happening, and I would like to share with you all my plan which is an open invite to you all to join in with a little thing I'd like to call Huey Geddon. So I guess the first thing to address is why? Why am I spending my first day rushing to Huey? Why should you spend your first day rushing to Huey with me? Well, there's two main reasons. One, the smaller reason, is that it's quite easy. There's relatively low requirements, and we'll of course go over those in just a couple of moments, but it's pretty easy to get into the Huey fight and get going. The second, the bigger reason, I just think it'll be really fucking fun. Can you just imagine, like, 20 of us all there, just, like, blasting it with earth magic and whacking it with hammers, and we're all just there in our robes and our shitty starter gear, like, on day one? That'll be so much fun. I just can't. I can't imagine anything more fun. It's the perfect place to mass with a group of people on day one because it's relatively low requirements and you can do it with a group and it gets easier the more people. So please, come and join me for day one, Huey. And if you're thinking, day one, what? How are you going to get there so quick? It's really not that bad. Let me fill you in because I have a complete route planned out. Let's get into it. All right, first up, I've got this slide with what we need and what we want. What we need is the more important one, so those are the majority of what we're going to focus on, and that includes protection prayers, food, an altar teleport, like a way to get to a prayer restoration altar and back, and a weapon or spells to use, depending on if we're magic or melee. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for a range build, I don't feel like there's a great range weapon you could use early on, but magic and melee both have very viable ways to damage Huey in the early game, so either way, you can be uh, happy to, to pick either a, a mage or a melee main style. In terms of what we want, we wouldn't mind having some prayer bonus on our gear. The higher the combat starts, the better. Prayer potions, while not necessary, do allow you to speed up the kills a lot, because then you can leave your overheads online in a group to get the damage buff on Huey. So if people have prayer potions, then it means we can all be getting a damage buff while we're there, assuming there is at least three of us. <laughs> and finally, the Pendant of Eights is a great teleport method to get back to Huey if you aren't a bank heister, because bank heists actually have the easiest time with this. Not that I'm planning on picking it. So this is just a general overview, and I'm going to go into each of these in more detail, but I thought it's best to give like a broad sense of what we might want. You can see you've got some Zamorak Monk rubs over there on the right for the prayer bonus, and Clue Compass is probably my relic of choice. Moving on though, let's dive in and see how we are going to get our protection prayers. Well, the first step is to unlock our first region. If you don't know how to unlock your first region, I put a guide up for that yesterday. I've got an entire route that will get you your first region unlocked within an hour of logging into the game. It's going to be nice and easy, so I'm going to be doing that within my first hour, and then once I've unlocked Valamore, I'll be completing any quick, easy tasks I see within it until I unlock my Tier 3 Relic. That's really important. You want to get to Tier 3 because that puts your combat XP multiplier from 8 times to 16 times for combat stats specifically, which includes prayer, the stat that we're trying to pray in right now. Once we're tier 3, you're going to go kill 12 dragons and bury their bones. Easiest way is just going to be water strike. You can kill blue dragons on Soul Wars Isle in the dungeon. You can kill red dragons in the Brimhaven dungeon as well. Those are both options available within the starting regions. So either of those you can get dragon bones from. You want to kill 10 anyway, so you unlock your second combat mastery point for 10 enemies over level 100. But by killing 12, it allows us to reach level 30 prayer, which means that we don't need to use both of the museum lamps on prayer. We can save one of them for something else instead of getting five bones and then using both lamps. 
Like, you may as well just get 12, get your second mastery at the same time, get up to, all the way up to 30. Then you're ready to complete Shield of Arav if you haven't already, and once you've done that, you can claim two lamps from Minus. You can use the level 30 lamp, which has 5k inside on prayer, to hit 49 and unlock all your protection prayers. The leftover level 20 can be used on whatever you like, but if you're a melee build, and even maybe if you're a mage, put it on Slayer after doing the museum quiz and you'll hit 31 to get yourself a nice head start. Slayer is going to be important for melee in particular, and mages without bank heist. So if you are a mage without bank heist or a melee build, you will probably want to start linking on your Slayer with this lamp here. If you're a mage without friendly forager, however, you may want to use it on herb lore, as you're going to need a quick way to get online with that and you can first get to 20 by completing the Karamji Easy Diary. It gives you a 1k lamp which will turn into 8k which can be used on a, a level 1 skill. So that's the easiest way to get your herb lore up and running if you're not picking Friendly Forager. But I would highly recommend it. More detail on that in a little while. So the long and short of it is unlock Valamore, get to tier 3, kill 12 dragons, bury the bones, shield of a rav, Two lamps from Minus. Big one goes on Prayer, little one goes on Slayer. Or Herblaw, if you're a mage without Friendly Forager. Moving on to food. Now, if you have Animal Wrangler, your food's going to be pretty sorted anyway. You'll be able to just fish whatever you like. If you're not an Animal Wrangler, you will need to make a little bit of GP. And then you can come to this lovely little shop, the Shrimp and Parrot in Brimhaven, just close to the Brimhaven League's teleport, and you can buy as much food as you want here, up to Swordfish and Karam ones. They are a little pricey, especially the Karam ones, so you may not want to get too many of those. But honestly, you can get away with tuna. Like, you don't need much more than that for Huey. You don't eat that much unless you're making constant mistakes. So, uh, you know, lobsters, tuna, swordfish, all going to be fine. Karam ones if you want the extra security and you've got loads of money. Especially if you're a dodgy deals player, you're likely to have. Uh, but yeah, food's fairly, fairly easy for animal wranglers. And fairly easy, you just need a little bit of money to come here if you're not an animal wrangler. Next up, transportation. Now, you will have your tier 3 relic, of course, so for each of those, I've got a method of getting it to and from a prayer altar and back to Huey. Clue Compass users can restore prayer at the Fortis Temple stash unit. This is the main temple that you go to at the first quest in Valamore when you go underneath it to meet the prince and whatnot. There's a stash unit right there, so it, it puts you like straight next to the altar, literally a couple tiles away. To get back, though, you're going to need a pendant of eights. The only other way without a pendant of eights, as you can see at the bottom there, is to use the Quetzal transport system running from Quetzalcalli Gorge, which also means you have to get back to a Quetzal. Though running from the Fortis Temple stash unit isn't that long of a run to get back to a Quetzal, if that's the way you have to take. You do want the pendant though, it's a lot easier, and if you go in melee you will get one anyway, it's only if you go in mage that you might not if you don't do the, the Slayer grind. Bank Heist, on the other hand, they can go to Varrock East Bank and then just go slightly south past Warbury's Rune Shop to the Zamorok Altar, Chaos Altar, and then you can go straight back to the Huey Bank, because Bank Heist goes to a bank. Fairy's Flight gets to go to the Varrock Tree Patch. This is the closest one I was able to find anyway to a prayer altar. Varrock Tree Patch, and then there's the church just across the road by the hairdressers and the museum and, and all that jazz. And yeah, like I say, again, Pendant of Eights to get back there. You really are going to want that, but it does require the 48 Slayer. As a melee, you're going to be doing that grind regardless. As a mage, it's kind of optional, but recommended if you don't have Bank Heist. Alright, the mage route is the easier path to get set up for sure, because all you need is a Staff of Earth and some Air Runes, or a Staff of Air and some Earth Runes. And then whatever catalytic runes you're using to enable your offensive spells, be that chaos, death, blood. Obviously, you're starting off on mind, but I'm hoping you're already out of that stage by this point. It may be worth considering rushing ahead to tier 4. That way, you can get Golden God, power level your magic through the high al alchemy that comes for free with no runes, and also get 
a ton of GP which you can use for death runes and you could be up to even blood runes maybe. Although you wouldn't necessarily have a good place to buy blood runes. Yeah, you probably aim in for death. There's nowhere to buy blood runes in the starting zones. So unless you add another additional zone, then you're not getting bloods. But deaths, definitely. And you can, you know, use blast spells. So Golden God rushing tier 4. I don't know what the points boundary is yet. So I don't know how viable it'll be to rush tier 4 on day 1. But it might be a way to level up and get some GP. You could also do it through Slayer to aim for that level 48 and get the Pendant of Eights. Especially if you don't have Bank Heist. This is the quickest way to get back to Huey for anyone. It teleports you to a little pillar that's just around the corner. It's not far at all from, from Huey. So you could just train your mage that way through Slayer and get your Slayer training done as well. A head start on that. So not much to focus on for mage. You get a lot more time to level up your magic on this path than you would on the melee path leveling up your melee stats because of the slayer grind that melee has to go into. And that is because we need to kill the Frost Nagua. And not just for the Pendant of Eights, but for the Glacial Tomotley. It is the number one weapon we could be using here. It has a 1 in 250 drop rate at tier 3. And a 1 in 100 drop rate at tier 4. So depending on how big those boundaries are to the next relic. It might be worth rushing tier 4 as a melee as well. To try and get that reduced drop before you get to killing the Frost Nagua though, you are going to have to crack through 83,000 XP worth of Slayer. To do that, you can get your first 8k from the Varok Museum, up to 16 from the Karamji Easy Diary. Lumbridge Easy will take you up to 36k, Varok Diary up to 56k, and the last 27k you can do with actual Slayer tasks, training your melee stats. Of course, you could do this exact same thing if you were doing the mage route as well, just to get a head start on all that. You could still do all the Slayer lamping. But you may want to save those lamps for use elsewhere. You may need to use them on Herblot if you're not friendly forager. There's a few different moving parts here. So you've got to consider each thing and like, will I be able to get all of these done with my relic combinations and whatnot. And then yeah, you just go kill the Frost Nagua until you get one. You can kill a Moxley Atoll itself for a much higher drop rate it comes much more commonly i think it's like 10 times or five times more common so you can definitely get the hammers and the pendant much quicker that way i don't know how feasible it'll be at that point in the league i, I don't know what level will be at that point so i can't figure it out yet I know we'll have prayers though, and you can pray mage against the Frost Nagur to negate all their damage. You either smack them with whatever weapon you have, you know, just grab like a rune mace or something. You'll get a rune mace from them soon enough because they drop them like flies. If you're a mage, you can, you can just fire strike or fire bolt or whatever spell you're up to. For the rest of the gear, mages can get the Zamrock Monk Bottoms from the Patadermus Temple, where you do Priest in Peril. You can go in there even without Priest in Peril and farm the Zami Monk Rubs. There is also a monk in the Varrock Castle, but I imagine it'll be too tough competition to try and farm that guy. Same drop rate, you have to telegrab the stuff too because it's behind bars. And I just imagine it'll be really busy there, so I wouldn't bother trying when there's so many more monks in the Patadermis Temple. For melee though, you don't really care about the plus two or three magic accuracy buff that comes from the Zami robes. You can just get yourself priest gowns from either of the clove shops in Varrock. Finally, prayer potions. Now, I am highly recommending Friendly Forager for this strategy so that you can just passively get all your herbs and levels as you're progressing through the early stages, completing a bunch of tasks. Especially if you do end up rushing to tier 4, you'll probably end up doing a load of tasks that trigger the Friendly Forager, and you can look for them in particular if you know you're going to be getting loads of herb income from it. You'll have Renar weeds in no time by the droves, and if you keep the pouch full with the other herbs, then you can pretty much just farm as many Renar weeds as you want from this. It's going to be fantastic. You'll be able to make your prayer potions. The only thing to consider is snape grass. And without unlocking another region, there isn't a great answer, but there is an answer that doesn't require us to get to 61 farming. And that is in Fortis Castle. Right here. There's the castle, the palace, the museum, 
we've got a snake grasp on right here. Uh, it does require telegrab though, you can't get to it. But it's the only snake grass that we have access to until we go to other regions. For example, Korand has 10 spawns, Warbirth Island of course in Fremenic, and then Asgarnia has the spawns to the crafting guild. You can also get them from eclectic impling jars, but this is going to require 50 hunter, which is quite a grind to be doing, especially early on. So yeah, your best way of getting these is going to be telegrabbing them, which will require 31 magic, but hey ho. It's worth it for some lovely prayer pots. And if you are a friendly forager, you will of course have an, I can't remember if it's 90 or 95% chance to save secondaries. So you won't have to telegrab a whole bunch of those. Just a couple and it'll probably see you. Alternative options, if you really, really just want to take dodgy deals and you don't want to wait till tier 4 to reload on it. You can get one dose prayer pots from the Frost Nagua themselves, so if you're good at teleporting out to restore your prayer while you're farming your Tomotli or your Pendant of it, you can also farm some one dose prayer potions, you like decant them into full ones eventually, but the drop rate isn't that good so it's going to take you a while to build up any decent amount of them. You may also get some herbs from the Slayer grind up to the Nagua, depending on what monsters you kill and what they happen to drop for you. As a last resort, you're going to need to go find yourself some seeds from Master Farmer or whatever and get a rake, go to Forty's Herb Patch, start farming motherfucker, you got to do something. You need your prayer potions. They're not 100% necessary, especially if there isn't really enough people to maintain the overhead damage boost. Then you can get away with just flicking your prayers up when the attacks come in. In that scenario, you don't really need prayer potions at all. But I'm kind of assuming that we might have a decent sized group of people turn up and we'll be able to keep that bonus online and really we will want to be using prayer potions for that. So yeah, I take Friendly Forager if you're doing this and it'll save you a lot of headache of figuring out that prayer potion situation you do have to make sure you get 31 mage for the telegrab though even if you're a melee build but with like killing dragons with water strike and stuff like that you'll probably be close to it anyway like mage is something that you always want to train for teleports and alchemy and etc so it's going to be easy enough for you to uh, get up to 31 with the boosted xp at 16 times especially and that is all there is to it i've gone over everything here again i would just like to extend an open invite to the world do you want to come do day one huey with me you want to turn up to huey again please feel free let me know in the comments come and join my discord server there's a link in the description of the video if you aren't in there already and let me know i'll be in there tomorrow all day in discord i will be recording all day so that i can make footage but if you're playing on day one and you don't really have a strong idea of what you want to do yet, come to Valamor with me, we'll smack up Huey. It might not be the most efficient thing to be doing on day one, it might not be the smartest thing to be doing on day one, but it'll be a fucking good laugh when there's 20 of us in our little robes, whacking him with hammers and shooting earth bolts at him, and somebody gets a dragon hunter wand on day one. Yeah. I mean, I'll even take the Hubert. I'll take the Hubert pet. I like that pet. I'll have to get rid of Duke Suck, but it's worth it for the Hubert. Alright folks, that's going to be all from me. Hopefully some people show up with me and I'm not just there soloing it with my hammers like a sad bastard. I will if I have to though. Until tomorrow when the leagues kicks off. Look after yourselves. Be lovely to one another. And I'll see you on the next one.